A 60-year-old man succumbs to COVID-19. That's the story we're tracking in your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Wednesday, September 15. The country recorded its 53rd death as a result of COVID-19. The deceased, a 60-year-old Barbadian male, passed away on Tuesday while at the Accident and Emergency Department of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. The Health Ministry reports that he was unvaccinated and had cold morbidities. At the same time, new infections surpassed 100 according to the latest COVID-19 figures. 124 positive new cases, 51 males and 73 females were identified from the 1,700 tests conducted by the Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory on Tuesday. Of these new cases, 21 are under the age of 18 and the remaining 103 are 18 years and over. There are 752 persons in isolation. Since March 2020, the island has recorded 6,177 confirmed cases. To date, 122,509 first doses have been administered under the National Vaccination Program for COVID-19. A total of 96,629 people, or 35.7% of the population, have received their second dose and are fully vaccinated. In other news this Wednesday, police are continuing investigations into the discovery of a body at a house located at Murphy's Pasture in the city. Police told Barbados today it appears to be a sudden death and no foul play is suspected at this time. A new centre that will probe issues challenging the education system in Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean was launched today. It's called the Research Initiative for Supporting Education in the Caribbean, RISE, and it's funded by the United States Agency for International Development, USAID. Education Minister Santia Bradshaw has praised the new centre, saying it's especially critical now given the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on education. The collaboration could not have come at a more pivotal point. The combined vision of USAID in strengthening partner countries and their capacity to deliver quality learning opportunities for children and youth along with the University of the West Indies drive to establish the Caribbean Educational Research Center, all goes well for potential to collect meaningful evidence and for us to use that evidence to make informed decisions in education. At this time, especially in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, a functioning education research center with an interdisciplinary research focus that supports decision-making and policy development for educational innovation is indeed welcome. It has not only the potential to improve the quality of education at the nursery, primary, secondary, and tertiary levels, but will provide opportunities for students within various colleges and universities to contribute to the development of their countries. In effect, the research conducted has the potential to positively impact the lives of approximately 1,500 leaders in education, 10,000 teachers, and 200,000 students. United States Ambassador to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Linda Teleagata, says the U.S. government, through U.S. aid, is investing more than $3.5 million into the RISE project. She says the RISE project focuses on basic education themes and builds on the work the United States supports under the Early Learners Program to train teachers and provide materials to improve literacy across the region. I am sure you will agree that education systems should equip all youth with the necessary tools to become fulfilled and productive members of society. To support this goal, the United States government through USAID is investing more than three and a half million dollars in the RISE project. The intent is to promote policy-driven decisions that are grounded in education, research, and high quality data from across Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. Through this project, we look forward to seeing the establishment of a regional research center at the University of West Indies Cave Hill campus. The center will have the capability to generate and utilize robust data and information from across the Caribbean. We anticipate the research center will produce important findings to support decision making and policy development for educational innovation. I am also pleased to note that the University of West Indies will collaborate with the University of South Florida 
to leverage technical expertise and promote international exchanges, learning, and diversity. Don't miss the opportunity to rebuild Caribbean agriculture. That's the call from the Assistant Secretary General of Trade and Economic Integration for CARICOM, Joseph Cox, as he addressed the launch of Caribbean Week of Agriculture this morning. He says the COVID-19 pandemic has given farmers, wholesalers and other agricultural investors a platform to develop a modern and sustainable sector. In this regard, whereas COVID-19 has exposed areas of fragility in our regional food systems, including supply chain shocks, vulnerability to international, international price volatility, and input source supplies concentration. The pandemic has also created new market opportunities. In fact, there is an old adage which indicates a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. And in this regard, I choose to view the incidents of COVID not as a market disruptor per se, but as an accelerant for change. For example, whereas as a community we have been talking about agricultural insurance for decades, the region is now reviewing our recent parametric insurance model that has been recently introduced in one of our member states. Opportunities are bound, ladies and gentlemen. From the use of drones in agriculture in Belize, anchor farms in Jamaica, smart greenhouses is a solution to the use of the Agri-Extension app, a pilot application designed for the farmers in Antigua Barbuda, the Bahamas, Diana, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines to ensure their access to remote agricultural extension services. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. To regional happenings in Jamaica, Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries Floyd Green has resigned and apologized to the country after being caught on camera at a social gathering failing to observe COVID-19 protocols on a no-movement day. More in this report from TVJ News. Floyd Green has resigned as Minister of Agriculture. This comes just hours after a video surfaced with him attending a gathering, presumably on a no-movement day, in breach of COVID-19 protocols. Mr. Green said he met this morning with Prime Minister Andrew Holness and indicated that he will withdraw from the Cabinet. In a statement, Mr. Green said, No matter how briefly and regardless of the circumstances, I should never have participated in any engagement that could indicate a lack of appreciation of the difficult and serious realities that now face the entire country. He said, my actions have demonstrated a lack of sensitivity for the difficult realities that all of us are facing currently. He noted that it was wrong, further noting, I accept that this was an error in judgment and that it sends the wrong signal, especially in light of the government's drive to reduce the spread of COVID-19. For this, I am really and truly very sorry. Now, Mr. Green said he will work hard to regain the trust and regard of the Jamaican people. He noted that he remained 100% committed to serve the people of Southwest St. Elizabeth, where he is Member of Parliament. On the international front, TikTok's lead data protection regulator in the European Union has opened two inquiries into the Chinese-owned short video platform related to the processing of children's personal data and transfers of personal data to China. More in this report from Reuters TV. TikTok faces two new investigations in the EU. The probes relate to the processing of children's personal data and transfers of personal data to China. Ireland's Data Protection Commission is allowed to impose fines of up to 4% of global revenue. It's TikTok's main regulator in the EU due to the location of the social network's HQ for the region. Back in August, TikTok announced stricter privacy controls for teenagers, seeking to address criticism that it has failed to protect children from hidden advertising and inappropriate content. 
Owned by China's ByteDance, the platform has grown rapidly around the world, particularly among teenagers. A spokesperson for TikTok said it had implemented extensive policies and controls to safeguard user data and relies on approved methods for data being transferred from Europe. Ireland's data watchdog earlier this month levied a record fine of about $265 million on WhatsApp. But the watchdog has faced criticism from other European regulators over the speed of its inquiries and the severity of its sanctions. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.